Hi, welcome to Chris Cook for YouTube. Today I'm going to be doing banana pudding. Now, I am not going to home make the custard because I believe in working smarter and not harder. And there are a lot of fantastic recipes out here that you can do and you don't have to home make everything. So I'm just going to show you a fast way to do it that I do it. My family loves it. I loves it. And to me, it tastes just like homemade, just like you've slaved over the stove, but you really haven't. Now, if you have a preference, whereas you want to do your homemade banana pudding, then go ahead and do it. I'm just showing you a shortcut way to do it and it will be equally as good. So let's get started with the ingredients that you're going to need. You're going to need Nilla wafers. Back in the day these was called vanilla wafers but now they're Nilla wafers. And because I'm making a large one I'm using two boxes but I will put the recipe at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of this tutorial so you'll know how to do it if you're just doing a standard size. You're going to be need bananas. Now the better bananas to get are the ones that are ripened. See? That's not messed up. That's just ripened because they're going to be sweeter. As they ripen more, they have another. They have a sweet, sweeter taste to it. So these are the better bananas to get. You're going to need French vanilla instant pudding mix. Now this is French vanilla. This is the one you will need. Not regular vanilla, but French vanilla pudding mix. And you're going to need banana cream pudding mix. These are the two mixes that will give you that homemade taste. French vanilla and banana pudding, uh, banana cream, and these both are instant, okay? You're going to need some sugar, not a lot of sugar. We'll be using maybe about three tablespoons of sugar, and you're going to need half and half. Now, if you run out of half and half, because I am using oversized uh, pudding mixes, so if you run out of half and half, just go ahead and add some of your regular milk to it. That's fine, because all you need is just a hint of the taste of half and half in order to make it homemade. And you're going to need five egg yolks. Now, I'm using egg yolks, but you have five of them, but you're going to need them according to how many, uh, how big your dish is and how many bananas you need, how much space area you really need to cover. So these are the ingredients that you're going to need in order to make my homemade flavored banana pudding, but not with all of the fuss. So we'll be right back and get into it. Very quick, very simple, very easy, but yet you got that homemade taste and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Be right okay, back. now I'm at my mixer and as you can see, this bowl is cold and the reason for that is because it makes a faster quicker custard for the inside of the uh, for a faster quicker pudding for the inside of the banana pudding if you have it already cold so this just jump starts it so this is already cold all I did was rinse it out and then set it in my freezer now because I'm making a large one I'm going to go ahead and add my milk to this Right now, I'm adding my half and half, and you want to put that in your container first because you don't want to get all of your your uh, all of your pudding mix caught at the bottom or trapped at the bottom of your mixing bowl. Okay, so that was four cups of half and half, and that's what was in my little one quart container that I had. So I'm gonna finish out the rest of this with milk. Now you can do it all with milk if that's what you choose to do. That it doesn't really matter, but I found out that you get a little bit more of a homemade taste if you do it just with the mixture of milk and uh, cream, which is half and half. It's half milk and it's half cream. That's exactly what it's saying. Now that I have that in, I'm going to start to add my pudding mix. In goes my French vanilla. And I have another packet of French vanilla because they didn't have the larger one in the store. So I have two small ones. And that requires a little bit more milk, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to go with those seven because I think that that's really enough and now ends on my banana cream now you got to use the two types of pudding that I told you which is French vanilla and banana cream that makes the best homemade taste that you're gonna get when you're not doing it homemade so now I'm gonna start my mixer and I'm going to allow this to mix for two minutes 
Now, once I take it away from the mixture, it's not going to be the mixer. It's not going to be totally set. But what's going to happen is it's going to set while I'm putting together the bananas and the cookies for the vanilla wafer. So it's still going to be good. So I started it out just a little bit slow, just in order for me to get my pudding mix mixed in with my milk. Now I'm just going to take it up just a little bit. Okay. And you only need like two, two and a half minutes of just beating like that. And then you can take it. It'll be done. And it'll set while you're waiting for um, for your the rest of your banana pudding to get ready. Like you're cutting up your bananas and getting your uh, pudding mix. Getting your uh, cookie mix together. Your cookies and your bananas together. One thing that I do want to say this will not set if you're using soy milk so please don't use soy milk i don't care if you use two percent milk half and half or whole milk any of those choices but don't use soy milk because your pudding mix will not set okay so this is going to take roughly about two minutes and then i'm going to meet you back at the at the uh, table i will bring you back just to show you what it looks like there. Maybe I can just do it while you're still here. And as you can see, it's thickening up now. And you only want like two minutes of this. And it doesn't matter if you use your regular mixer or if you want to hand mix it, you can, but that's just a lot. It's a lot to be hand mixing. Now you see this is still thickening up, which is exactly how you want it. Had a little bit of milk left in that cup, and you know I don't believe in throwing away nothing. Okay, now I'm going to stop it and just show you. Okay, you see how it's thickening up? See how it's thickening up? Now, it's going to be a little bit thicker, not much thicker when I take it away. It'll still be dripping from my mixer see how it's, it's dripping from my mixer it will not be firm but once it sits for a few minutes it will get firm so i'm just going to continue to mix for probably another um three quarters of a minute and then i will meet you at the at the table be right back. okay i'm going to go ahead because it's blended enough and i'm going to add about three tablespoons of my sugar and you have to add that because it's not sweet enough now you can add the sugar in the beginning when you put the, the put the uh pudding mix in or you can add it now i just brought you back to show you because i had not added it and i'll meet you at the table okay now we're back now first i want to show you the pudding because it's set okay now that's the pudding then when you take it off it should just stand that, that little bit is gonna I'm trying to get it to drop but there the pudding mix see that's when you know when it's ready see how it's able to stand on that uh on that spatula then you know that it's ready okay so now we're going to just layer in the cookies and we're going to layer in the bananas on top of that now if some are stuck together like some of these are stuck together I mean, that's okay. Just go ahead and just layer it as best you can. That's just more cookie taste. And you're going to layer, layer it with the flat side down. Okay? There's a little bit of ovalness to the top part, so you're just going to leave it the flat side down. And this is not the best, best box I could have gotten, but it's okay. It's just going to be a little bit better. But just make sure you have a, a, a bottom layer. You don't have to uh, make sure that every piece is perfect. That's not what you're really looking for because all of this is going to be together and you're not going to be able to see it anyway. You just want to make sure that you have a layer. And like I said, this wasn't the best box, but that's okay. Okay. Now, once you've layered in your cookies on the bottom. Put one more in here. And you don't have to make them super tight. Just make sure to get a layer. Now you're going to start with your bananas. And remember I told you. Now you don't want your bananas to be mushy. That's not what you're looking for. Okay. You just want them to be ripe. 
That's what you're looking for. Then you're going to cut your bananas and you're going to place them on top of your banana pudding and you're going to spread it out and I'm going to go away and just finish this up because this part of it takes I mean it takes a little bit of you know a while to get it in like two three minutes which is fine now I'm going to show you something about this banana and I'm glad that this one was like that okay this is not what you want to use okay when you get down to that part of the banana if your bananas are that right just go ahead and toss that all you want is just like this you want your banana just to be white on the inside even if you have those darkened colors on the outside okay and I've been eating it this way you know a long time and I prefer it this way because it's just as good as the other ones and don't knock it until you tried it it's just as good as the other banana pudding but you don't have to spend a lot of time uh, making your custard so that's the good part about this and the part that I really really like so put that over there just continue to put it down now if you have a little bit of ripeness like that don't worry about it just go ahead and put that in only time you really worry about it is if you have a lot of it and you don't want to put that in your banana pudding okay and I'm doing this rather fast because I'm just showing you technique and I don't want to get into doing this you know all on the uh, all on the video because that would take too long basically if you can see what it is that I'm saying okay you can understand it a little bit out And you want to pull off those little side right parts on it. Just pull it right off. Okay, now once you get this covered uh, with the bananas, you're going to put just a little bit of the custard in. Just enough to make it stick to the next layer of bananas that you're going to put in. And I'll show you that step. And then we'll go back to repeating. So any place that I did not cover, you're not trying to stack them on top of each other. You're just trying to get a layer of bananas and a layer of the cookies. Okay? Now once you get that stacked in, okay, because that's what you want it to taste like, then you're going to add just a little bit of your pudding mix. You're not trying to add a lot of pudding mix at this point because you want them to taste pudding, bananas, and cookies. That's what you want to taste in a banana pudding. And of course, meringue, if that's what you're going to put on the top, which it is what we're going to put on the top of this one. So this is good. This is not a lot. But this is good enough to just get a little bit of stick at this point. Okay. So as you can see, I did not layer this real good. I just put it in, put it on enough so that I could get my crackers or my uh, cookies, I'm sorry, to stick to the top part of this, okay? And again, this was not the best. The best cookies, so I'm so glad that I do have two boxes.
Now, because this is the bottom layer, and I don't throw away nothing, because this is the bottom layer, you don't worry about, you really don't have to worry about, um, well, is that gonna be too thick? No, it's not gonna be too thick and it's not gonna be, uh, you're not gonna have that taste. I need to drink some water with it in your mouth. You're just gonna make certain that these, um, that this is all covered. And you need the bottom to be like this because you don't, you want to taste the cookies and bananas. You don't want to not taste them. You don't want to get them drowned out by the pudding. Mix. You want to taste your cookies and bananas. So this is the better way to do it. Now, if you prefer to just put a layer of pudding mix down on it up underneath this, just go ahead and do what you feel like you need to do. This is not a good bag of vanilla wafers. Okay, now that I have that in, now I'm going to layer in some of my pudding mix. And for those of you who love to make your, um, cook your pudding mix on your stove, don't knock this until you try it. Because you do it the way I said, you're going to get the same results. You're going to get good results, I'm telling you. And this is a good way to make it if you use the two pudding mixes that I have advised you to use. Now this time, as you can see, I put the pudding mix all over the top of my cookies. Now I'm going to go back. Make sure that it's down in there. Now what I want to do is I want to go back and I'm going to layer bananas because the last I did was cookies. Then I did the pudding mix. Now I'll put bananas and then I'm going to put cookies. So when I get through with this next layer, I'll bring you back and then I'll show you how we do the rest of it. Be right back. Okay, now we're back and I've already put in the bananas. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the cookies on top. And like I said, this is the worst. All Mostly all of these are kind of like stuck together. This is the worst uh, vanilla wafers I've opened. But And the reason why they are stuck together is because when somebody put them in the in the container they didn't wait until they cooled totally so that caused the cookies to stick together so I hope I have enough to just to finish this out which is really what I want to do but I don't have a large amount left and I did use two boxes and to just let you know this pan that I'm using is a 10 or this cook this dish that I'm uh, using is a 10 by 14 so this is kind of like, it's not your normal dish, it's, it's, you know, a lot larger. And I'm going to try to see if I can finish out with just the, uh, the cookies that I have. Because normally, I put a layer around the sides, but because these are stuck together, I'm not going to be able to do that. But I'm just going to show you how that is actually done anyway. I'm down to the last leaves. I'm just going to have enough to cover. Now, normally what I would do, which I'm not going to be able to do it because you can, as you can see, the vanilla wafers that I'm using, they stuck together. But normally what I do is I go around the dish like this. Okay? I go all the way around the dish with vanilla wafers. It would go, I would go all the way around it. And that helps to hold in my meringue. But this time I'm not going to be able to do that. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to have enough out of these two boxes to finish up just this little layer of top. That's all I have enough to do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, not going to worry about it. 
because you still can make do. So you can't get upset with the cookie company. You still can make do. So now I'm going to put on my last topping or my last layer of pudding. Okay. And I'm still going to be able to do the meringue. I just put over the top of this, but I just don't have enough to to finish out like I really wanted to show you how to do this. But you really get the picture. Just go around it because you'll probably have enough with your dish. Just And normally those two boxes is enough. But when I'm being stuck together, I didn't get the use of whole cookies. So just go ahead and put on your topping of the pudding mix, which is what I'm doing right now. And cover it all. Make do with what you have, so. I guess it's a good thing it did work out like this because it really shows, gets it gives me an opportunity to show you what to do when you run short. Okay, now I didn't use all of my bananas, but I did have this little banana part left, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it down. Just wherever it'll go, just go ahead and put it down. Just make certain that they're laying down. Try not to put them all in one space. That's just giving them a little bit of extra bananas on top. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and make the topping for this. This is ready, and you're really not cooking this, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to cook the meringue that's getting ready to go on top. So I will meet you back at the mixer. I'm going to make the meringue, put it on top, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Be right Okay, now we're back, and as you can see, I chilled my, uh, my bowl a little bit, and I did have my egg... I, did, I mispronounced and said egg yolks earlier, but it's egg whites. You don't use eggs in this at all. I did have not egg yolks, you don't. So I did have my egg whites sitting in the refrigerator as well. So I'm going to put them in my mixer and I'm going to start that to mix. And I'm going to beat this until it is fluffy. Now, while that is mixing up, and I hope that you can hear me well, I want to show you something about this banana pudding. Okay, I want you to look at the sides of it, okay? You want to make certain that you have the pudding that is down touching your cookie, okay? All the way around, see? You want it to be touching your cookies. See? Now, where it's not touching, say for instance right here, that's the only little bit you see, you're going to have just a potato and a, and a banana crunch in your mouth with no pudding. And that's not what you want with a banana pudding. You want all of it to be touching. Now because I layered this with pudding between the layers, you're still going to get the, the uh, layer taste of pudding, bananas, and cookies with this because some of the pudding is layered past this a little bit. I hope you just understood what I just said, okay? But you want to make certain that all of this, okay, has pudding touching it, okay? So now, we're going to beat this on high because this takes maybe about two or three minutes. You're not going to add cream or tartar to this, and you're not going to add salt. You don't need to add any of those. Only thing we're going to add is just a little bit of sugar, and we're going to do this once it spikes. So once this spikes, I'm going to bring it back and show you what it looks like. I'll be right back and we can spread it on the top. Be right back. Okay, this has been beating roughly about three minutes. So now I'm going to show you what it actually looks like. Didn't add anything, just allowed it to be. You see when that peak holds like that, when it holds, it's ready. 
when it's not dripping it's ready so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it just a little bit longer because I'm going to add about two tablespoons of sugar and what that does is it just gives me a sweeter taste to the meringue because at first the meringue was just meringue with no sugar in it. Now I've added the sugar so that when you eat the meringue and eat the banana pudding, you'll taste the sweetness of both of them. Okay, so this shouldn't take just a couple of minutes. Okay, that's good. See how that, look at that peak. The peak is still connected and still holding. So now I'm just going to take it and I'm going to layer it on the top of my banana pudding. I'm going to put it in a 400 degree oven for roughly about five minutes because that's all it takes to brown the top. We don't need to brown anything else because everything else is already done. That's why I said you don't need to cook any portion of this. So to layer it, you're just going to put it on the top. Just make certain that your whole pie is actually covered. Now I'm going to cover this. I don't want to use up too much time by having you to sit there and watch me cover it because I have to spread it out. Now normally if I had, like I, when I did the cookies on the side, if I had the cookies, a bit of the cookies would be showing through. That's just my oven to let me know that, you know, I, it's ready for me to, it's reached that 400 degree temperature so I can go ahead and put it in. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this and you don't have to come all the way down. You can if you want. If you want to cover the whole thing, you can. But my, my thing is just covering the important parts all the way down around the side. I normally don't have that because I normally have the cookies that are going around the side and they make a real good design. But I didn't get a good box of cookies so we won't worry about that. Now, I'm going to smooth this out on the top a little bit, and I've already shown you really basically how to put this on top of it. I've done this so many times. A lot of the procedures that I show you, I mean, I'm just used to doing them. And you're going to bring this part down on it. Just making certain that your banana pudding is all covered or covered as best you can. Because all of it is already done now. This part is now is just added pleasures in eating a banana pudding. But everything is done. Then if you want to spike it a little bit, I mean, you can do that yourself. But everything is basically done. Okay, now I'm going to put this in a 400 degree oven. I'm going to allow it to cook for roughly about 5-6 minutes. No longer than that. At this part, you have to keep your eyes on it. You got to keep your eyes on it because you don't want the meringue to burn. And the meringue is very, very easy to burn. So you don't want that. So what I'm going to do is to keep my eyes on it. And what I'll do is I'll bring you back as soon as this is ready. Okay? So I'll be right back. And this is how it should look when you get ready to put it in the oven. Be right back. 
Okay, now I'm back and I'm getting ready to take it out because I think it's brown enough on the top. There you go. There it is. That's the banana pudding. Okay, now I'm not going to cut this right now because my family is going out to dinner and this is going to be dessert when they get back. But I am going to cut into it so you'll be able to see it. So uh, I'm going to allow this to sit here for, <laughs> it's going to be a couple of hours. And then I'll cut into it and show you what it looks like. I'll be back. Okay, now I'm back and I'm going to go ahead and cut into it just to show you because I got people that are really ready to go ahead and just eat this. So I'm just going to cut in it so you can see exactly what it looks like. Get those two little cookies out of there. All right. So there's the banana pudding. And there it is on the plate. And look at it. See, your cookies will get covered from your pudding mix that's already in there. And you won't have a problem. And you don't want it runny. You want it stiff, okay? So, there you have it. Chris is showing you a simple way to make banana pudding and you don't have to go through the cooking process. But if something, if that's something that you want to do, then go ahead and do it. I'm just trying to show you a different way. And as always, thank you for watching Chris Cook for you too. Bye!